While there are a lot of things you could argue our world hasn't really gotten better at with technology, there's one thing that's almost universally considered a leap from what we had before. That's medicine. From basic medicine to surgeries to just examinations, we've gone above and beyond over the years to make the kinds of practices that save people's lives as much as possible. And then there are the methods to try to extend people's lives, like cryogenics, being frozen in time now to live later. And you might not think that this has happened a whole lot, but it has. So here now are 20 people who were frozen in time. Number 20. The Mountain Family We're going to start with a little bit of a twist, because there's more than one way to be frozen in time, believe it or not, and I've seen it firsthand. Or the ones who discovered the people we're about to talk about did. This is about a trio of young people who were found on a summit in Argentina. To be more specific, they were about 22,000 feet above sea level, which is pretty high. The bodies of 13-year-old and her younger companions were found to be so perfectly preserved by them being on that mountain summit that one of the ones who found them honestly thought that one of the girls was just sleeping. Later on after being examined, it was noted by some that they were to be some of the most perfectly preserved mummies in the entire world, all because of the cold temperatures of the mountain keeping them well preserved. The irony, of course, is that this isn't such a far-fetched thing. We put food in the freezer so that it can be preserved in its own right, so why not people under the right conditions? And if you're wondering why those three were on the mountain in the first place, they were all part of an Incan sacrifice. Due to their preserved nature, they were able to discover that they were actually drugged, and it was that which ended their lives. And then they were just left there for the gods to deal with, showing how some ancient customs even now are just hard to hear about. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. For today's fancy topic, this picture can be a bit much, but the story behind it isn't so far-fetched, because allegedly a man wanted to be frozen so that he could avoid a certain death due to the cancer that he had been diagnosed with. Believe it or not, this is one of the backbone principles of true cryogenics, the idea that there are people on the verge of death right now, but they might be able to survive if they were frozen in time until a cure could be found for them later. Cancer would be a great example of this as its research as a whole continues to grow so that it can eventually be a cure, but when it would be cured, well, that's just unknown. This man decided to be frozen alive to avoid dying. Not everyone would be up for for this, obviously, but it's something that many would definitely consider, so let us know what you think below using the hashtag fancy topic. Number 19. The Ice Maiden Heading back to events that we know have happened, we're going to introduce you now to the Ice Maiden, also known as the Princess of Ukuk, so feel free to refer to her by either of those names. Regardless of what you may call her, she is yet another mummy that was found in more natural cryogenics, and she's believed to be 2,400 years old. She would belong to a tribe that lived around the Black Sea, and was discovered by a team of archaeologists in the summer of 1993. On the Ukuk Plateau, near the border of China. Now, we have an example of a high place preservation of a person, though this one's a little bit different than the family one from before. Because the Ice Maiden would be found in a chamber within the mountain, and there was a coffin in which she was confined to. The chamber was not unlike certain Egyptian burial tombs, by which we mean that it was stacked with all sorts of unique items to likely be taken with her into the afterlife. The archaeologists discovered her dressed in a white woolen stockings with a woolen skirt with horizontal white and maroon stripes, and a yellow Chinese silk blouse with maroon piping. Quite interestingly, because of how well preserved she was, scientists did a recreation mold of what she would have looked like when she was alive, and the maiden is quite striking. The Ice Maiden now rests at the Republican National Museum in Russia. Number 18. Rosalia Lombardo 
Now I have to warn you about this next one because it's a bit odd in its own right. Because I'm going to be talking about yet another mummy, which shouldn't be too much of a surprise at this point, except that this mummy has a title attached to it, and that would be the world's most beautiful mummy. That's certainly a choice. Granted, as we've shown you, preservation of mummies can work in keeping them lively in certain ways, but to call a mummy beautiful in the literal sense would take something a bit more. Enter Rosalia Lombardi who was not even two years old when an illness took her. Truly a horrifying thing to experience in regards to the family. And indeed, the father was overcome with grief so much so that he didn't want to simply bury his daughter, he wanted to preserve her for all of time. So he would ask an embalmer to preserve her in full. Sometimes referred to as Sleeping Beauty, hers was one of the last corpses to be admitted to the catacombs in Sicily. And as you can see via the pictures, the mummy that now remains and is over 100 years old at this point, as she died in 1920, is very striking indeed. Part of the reason for her being perfectly frozen in time is due to how her coffin is sealed, ensuring that the elements don't touch her in such a way that it would touch others. Hopefully her father found peace in knowing that his daughter would be admired in her final state for some time to come. Number 17. Eva Perón if you think you've heard all the crazy preserved stories of the world, you have not seen anything yet. Because now, I get to tell you about Eva Perone, a woman who was indeed embalmed after her death at the request of those who were close to her. And as you might have guessed, it was a very well done procedure, and Eva remained fair looking to all those who saw her. Eva herself was the wife of a former leader of Argentina, and she was well known for her work with the poor, which helped her husband's political rule, and helped her gain a good reputation as well. Are you waiting for the twist? Well, after she passed away, her father was later deposed, and those that took over literally stole her remains, and an odyssey would begin when which her body was ferried from one spot to another in order to protect it and themselves. The people were not for this, and would even write, where is the body of Eva Perone on walls in various places, to try and get it and restore it to where she belonged, which was with the people. And after 20 years, her party, being her her husband Juan was still alive but living in exile, was legalized in Argentina, and as a result, Eva Perón's body was returned to him. It was cleaned and then preserved once again. In October of 1976, it would finally be taken from where it was and placed in her family's mausoleum in Buenos Aires. The place that it resides in is fortified, all to ensure that no one can ever take the body again. Probably not the story that you were expecting, but sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. Number 16. Zen Zhu let us now tell you about the story of Zen Zhu, a Chinese noblewoman and wife to Li Kang, the Marquis of Dai, and Chancellor of the Changsha Kingdom during the Western Han Dynasty of ancient China. So if you can't tell, she was a very important person indeed. And because of that, she had a lot of wealth and power to show off, and was known for having a group of musicians to entertain her at times. She also was able to eat the finest of foods, ones that were specifically reserved for those of the royal family, and most of her clothing was made of silk and other valuable textiles. She also owned a variety of cosmetics. So, very much a noble woman of the times, but obviously I'm not here to talk about how she lived, I'm here to talk about how she was frozen in time. She would die in 163 BC and was found in 1971, which is almost a 2,000 years difference, a very key thing for what I'm about to tell you. Because when she was found, her skin was still very much intact, and there was still blood in her body. The corpse was wrapped in 20 layers of clothing bound with silk ribbons, and there were multiple layers to the tomb that she was in, as well as the coffin. So much so that an unknown liquid was what she was bathed in, and likely helped her in the preservation. Once she got exposed to the elements though, she disintegrated in part, but for a time she was without a doubt one of the best preserved people of all time. Number 15. David Blaine the next one is very much not like the others, and that's a good thing, because this one's about a magician named David Blaine, who has proven time and again to be an idiot. But why is that? Because for various shows, he will actually put himself through the ringer in the most physically taxing of ways in order to show the endurance that he has, even though it seriously screws him up later on. Such as when he decided to be frozen in time during a show back in the year 2000. To be clear on this, he wasn't flash frozen 
frozen or put into a cryo chamber like you would expect, but rather he was sealed within a block of ice that had enough room for him to move at least a little bit and to breathe, but still sealed up so that he couldn't escape once he was put inside. There are all sorts of reasons why this is an incredibly dumb thing to do. If you're not prepared for this, you could die in a variety of ways, not the least of which is your body getting too cold to move on, like hypothermia, and the fact that the longer that you're in there, the longer your body goes without food or water. And yet somehow, some way, with the world watching, he was in that block of ice for 63 hours, 42 minutes, and 15 seconds. And when he was released, it was because they brought in chainsaws to get him out. As you can guess, he wasn't in the best of shape, as he couldn't sleep while he was in the block or else risk his body shutting down. I really shouldn't have to say this, but I will anyways. Don't try this at home, people. Number 14. Couple in a Glacier Sometimes you honestly have to wonder how certain things happen the way that they do, because it doesn't make sense in any other way. To explain what I'm talking about, there was a mystery in the Swiss Alps that had not been solved for quite a long time. Mainly during World War II, a couple who happened to have a farm in the Alps would disappear, and no one knew where they were for 75 years. Until that very couple would be found in a glacier. I'm not making this one up. It was a worker who would find the bodies of a man and a woman, doing during routine maintenance, the corpses were preserved in the receding glacier that was near a slew of trendy ski resorts at 8,500 feet above sea level. Now, the couple's youngest daughter, 79-year-old Marceline Udry Dumoulin, told Swiss paper Le Matin that their children had never stopped looking for them. They had spent their whole lives looking for them without end and thought that they could give them the funeral that they deserved one day. She would also further note that the day of the disappearance was not particularly odd. The weather was good, her father was in good spirits, and they went for a walk in the valley when they just vanished. To be clear, it's still not full known how they ended up in the glacier, but clearly there was some kind of accident that left him in that state, and though it is a tragic end to a mystery, the family noted that now they are at least content and relieved to know what happened to their fallen members. Number 13. The Russian Monk this is a story of a monk from Russia who intentionally let the elements freeze him, survive the experience, and woke up years later as if nothing had ever happened. No, not really, but given all the stories you hear about monks, it didn't sound so far-fetched at first, did it? Rather, this is the story of Hambo Lama, who had a very simple goal in life. He wanted to be a monk, and wanting to fulfill his dream, he, at just the age of 16, would go to a Buddhist university that's now in ruins in order to get his experience and training to be one. He became a Russian Buddhist in 1911, but his journey was only getting started because during World War II, he would use his position to help the Russians in the war effort by providing meals and clothing for soldiers, as well as helping set up hospitals and other monks for those that needed tending to. At the age of 75, he would declare that he was ready to die, but his fellow monks didn't want him to admit that his death was imminent. So they all meditated together, and he died while doing so. A very monk thing to do, if I can be honest. Per his wishes, he would be buried and then later exhumed by the monks after a certain set of years. And when this act was fulfilled, people were actually shocked to see just how well preserved that the former monk had been. Due to the communist regime at the time, the monks had kept him hidden until 2002 when he was exhumed once again. And when they did, he looked so alive in the eyes of many that they considered him a living dead and would go up to him as he was put on display and shake his hand. Number 12. The Astonishing Mummy At this point, you should be used to people not only finding well-preserved mummies, but learning all about them and how things allowed them to be so well-preserved, which brings us to this particular mummy from Lund, Sweden, that was from the 1600s. When they discovered it in 2014, it was a lot more put together than many felt that it should be. When the coffin was opened, they found a remarkable sight because there was an old man who looked like he was simply sleeping. 
The preservation to them seemed astonishing, and that's when they discovered that the man was a bishop and prominent historical figure in Scandinavia, and he was in the crypt of the famous cathedral in Lund in 1680. He then played a key role in the founding of Lund University, and was also a physics professor, an architect, an entrepreneur, and a chaplain to the Danish king. So given all of those titles and qualifications, you can understand why so many would try to keep him as well preserved as possible when he passed. Aside from their preservation techniques, the other reason that people wanted to study his body was because they wanted to learn more about life in the 1600s. John Wilkes Booth John Wilkes Booth now, this is not some conveniently named person. This is indeed THE John Wilkes Booth that killed THE Abraham Lincoln just days after THE Civil War had ended, causing one of the biggest events in U.S. history at the time and making many wonder what would have happened if Lincoln had been President of the United States for longer. But what most people forget to ask is, what happened to John Wilkes Booth after he shot Lincoln? Well, after doing the deed, he ran and was killed in a barn 12 days later. He was then later wrapped in cloth, put on board a U.S. battleship, and sent to Washington. The body was then buried in a storage room at the old penitentiary and later moved to a warehouse at the Washington Arsenal in October of 1867. Or at least that's one version of the events. There's actually a conspiracy theory that Wilkes Booth had survived for a lot longer than that, living decades after the assassination. And while on his deathbed under an assumed name, he admitted that he was Booth and he then got better. As for the preserved mummy that was found later on, that was apparently an innocent man made to look like Booth via paperwork and such. Make all of that whatever you will. Number 10. Menmatre Sete I now, let's be honest here, when you want to talk about mummification, you need to talk about Egypt, because they're the most famous nation when it comes to embalming, making mummies, and overall the preservation of the body. They honestly have had it down to a science, and it's one that's still talked about today. But to be fair, not all of their mummies were in prime condition when they were discovered. I mean, look at King Tut, his actual body and not just his tomb, for proof of that. So that raises the question of what Egyptian mummy was the best preserved? Well, this one is the answer to that. And if you don't know him, well, that was the pharaoh of the New Kingdom 19th Dynasty of Egypt, the son of Ramses I and the father of Ramses II. He was actually a really good pharaoh, so much so that he actually won battles, brought peace to Egypt, and then undertook many measures to restore Egypt to some of the glory that it had before. When his tomb was found in the Valley of the Kings, it was noted to be as the finest ever discovered. Number 9. Man in the Hole you want to have a little fun from here? Well, I told you that the next entry was about a man of the whole. What would you think I was talking about? The real answer is that it is a man who lives in the Amazon rainforest alone and is believed to be the very last of his tribe. All attempts to communicate with him have failed because no one can get him to talk and no one knows the languages that he speaks. The term man of the whole is actually a reference to the homes that he has found to have lived in. They each have a narrow hole within them but no one knows why he does that. The man is a mystery and is a different definition of frozen in time because he's living out the ways of his old tribe even though he's seemingly the last of it. Number 8. Gene Hilliard now, so far I've shown you various variations of Frozen in Time, but how about a woman who really was frozen and came back to life when everyone thought she was dead? This is the tale of Jean Hilliard. The story for her keeps on changing as it gets more grand via a game of telephone, but the basics are this. In Minnesota, the year was 1980, an old Jean was trying to seek shelter after a car accident. It was cold outside, a blistering negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. The cold was enough to cause her to collapse and freeze solid. She was then found in the snow six hours later, taken to the hospital where it was believed that she was dead, and that was until they heard her whimper. Realizing this, they carefully warmed her up and she actually went on to live. The irony of the story is that people before and after her have had this happen to them, so as long as you're found in good enough amounts of time, you may be able to survive survive such a freezing. Number 7. Dr. James Bedford 
I've talked before a lot about cryogenics, but I honestly haven't had a true story about it yet. Well, let's change that, where we go to Dr. James Bedford. If that name does sound familiar, it's because he's the first person to have ever had his body preserved after he had died. Yes, that is actually what happened. The hope was that because they froze him just two hours after death, that he could be brought back via the cure for the kidney cancer that took his life. Fast forward to these days, and he still remains preserved at the Alcor Life Extension Foundation. He was indeed the first to truly take the plunge in regards to trying to come back to life via the hopes of the future. And while that hasn't happened yet, and some would argue it's not likely to happen at all, he is honored every year for what he has done. Number 6. Anna Baganol. Unlike the previous story, Anna Baganholm's tale is much more frightening. A skiing accident happened to her in 1999 where she would be trapped within freezing water under some ice with only a small air pocket to breathe and hold herself up in. And that went on for 80 minutes. During this time, she would experience extreme hypothermia and her body temperature decreased to 56.7 degrees Fahrenheit, one of the lowest ever surviving body temperatures recorded in a human with accidental hypothermia. She was thankfully found and then taken to a hospital, but it was almost a round-the-clock mission to get her back to full life. Even then, when she woke up, she was paralyzed from the neck down. However, she did make a mostly full recovery, but some nerve damage did persist. Number 5. Pompeii as you can fully see now, preservation has many forms, and one of them is just being straight up buried in things that can't let you age in the normal way. Such as when a volcano erupts right near your home and buries the entire city in volcanic ash. That is indeed the fate that was Pompeii. When Mount Vesuvius erupted, everything got buried in the city, to the point where the ash was so high that when it was found again, people couldn't actually believe it. The ash had enveloped everything, ensuring it was well preserved the people, the buildings, the animals, everything, making it a perfect archaeological dig site. Number 4. Ted Williams Ted Williams is perhaps one of the most famous baseball players to ever have lived, but he's also one of the most controversial in terms of what happened after he died. A pact that he had made with his family allegedly said that Ted Williams would be frozen in cryostasis. The catch? Apparently his body is in two pieces. According to reports, the head of Ted Williams was removed and preserved via one process, and the rest of his body went under standard cryo processes. His family fought the procedure but lost, and thus the curious case of Ted Williams endures even to this day. Number 3. Polly Hynek Polly Hynek is not unlike a certain someone from before who got literally frozen in the elements, was thought to be dead, and yet was able to be brought back to life. Polly was apparently frozen from the wrist down, and his father would call 911 claiming that his son had actually frozen to death. The procedure that would be used by a special surgeon to bring him back was noted to not always work, but yet it did with Polly Hynek. He never got to be 100% again, but he's happy for the second chance that he's been given with life. Number 2. Iwa Wisnerska Iwa Wisnerska was a paraglider who felt that she needed to train for a key event that was coming up in her life. This was during 2007 where she ignored a storm warning in the area that she was going to fly in, and when she did the deed, she actually got caught up in a raging storm cloud. She was sucked up into it and then went 33,000 feet into the air where the air was so thin, the temperature was so cold, and lightning could have struck her dead. And yet somehow, some way, she was able to get out of the cloud alive and landed back down on the ground. She was only a few miles away from where she was supposed to be, but a landing is a landing. Number 1. Chelsea Aki Salvacion now sadly, we're ending on a sour note, Chelsea was one of many out there who partake in cryotherapy or the act of using extreme cold in controlled bursts in order to heal quicker. Athletes like LeBron James actually use this method all the time. The problem for Chelsea though was that she tried to use a chamber at a business that was closed for the night. You're meant to have someone stand outside or nearby to help you in case something goes wrong, but she didn't have that, and as such, the chamber actually deprived her of oxygen. She passed out and was literally frozen in time. It's a very sad way to end things, as noted, but it's an important story because it's a warning to everyone out there. Cryotherapy can be useful if done properly. 
and in the hands of the right person. That's all from the realm of people who both past and present have found themselves frozen in time. Were you at all amazed by these stories of the frozen that were told? And did you not expect so many different examples of this kind of process? Should cryogenics be a thing of the future in our lives? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.